Have you ever spotted someone across the room? Someone so captivating that you just knew you had to meet them, but you felt glued to the spot, unsure of what to do next. In today's video, we're diving into the art of approaching women. Not just any approach, but one that respects their space, engages their interest, and sets the stage for a genuine connection. Whether you're looking to make new friends, expand your social network, or find someone special, the techniques we discuss today will help you approach women with confidence and respect. These are tried and tested strategies that work consistently, regardless of where you are. I've spent the last decade studying interpersonal relationships and social dynamics, sharing insights with thousands through workshops and coaching sessions. Today, I'm bringing this experience directly to you, distilling essential tactics that can transform the way you meet and connect with women. Part one, mindset and preparation. Let's start at the very beginning with the foundation of any successful approach, your mindset and preparation. How you prepare yourself before even saying hello can make a world of difference in the outcome. First up, confidence. This isn't about being overly bold or brash, but about the quiet assurance that you can carry a conversation and handle whatever outcome may come. Your body language speaks volumes before you even utter a word. Stand tall, maintain a relaxed posture, and keep your gaze friendly and direct. This doesn't just project confidence to others. It also helps you feel more confident inside. Next, let's talk appearance. You don't need the fanciest clothes, but showing that you've taken care to groom yourself and dress appropriately for the setting sends a clear signal. You respect yourself and the people you meet. It's about making a positive first impression that says, I'm here and I value this interaction. Importantly, respecting personal boundaries is crucial. Pay attention to social cues like body language and verbal responses. These will guide you on how comfortable the other person is and whether to take a step forward or give some space. And finally, be prepared for rejection. It's a normal part of interacting with people. Not everyone will respond the way you hope, and that's okay. Handle it with grace, learn from each experience, and move forward. Remember, rejection isn't a reflection of your worth. It's just part of the process. Keeping these points in mind will not only improve your approaches, but also enrich your interactions, making them more rewarding regardless of the outcome. Part two, understanding the setting. As we dive into understanding the setting, remember, where you are can be just as important as what you say. Different environments not only set the stage, but also influence how you should approach someone. Consider the atmosphere. A coffee shop in the morning might have people rushing to work, less open to a chat while the same place might be more relaxed in the afternoon. Bookstores with their quieter and more contemplative vibe call for a gentle approach, perhaps starting with a comment about a uh, book the person is looking at. Social events, on the other hand, are dynamic. People expect to mingle, making them great for more direct approaches. Developing your observational skills is key. Look around. Is the person of interest deeply absorbed in a book? Are they scanning the room, possibly open to conversation? These cues can guide your approach, helping you gauge how receptive someone might be. And let's talk about timing. It's essential to choose the right moment for your approach. Avoid interrupting someone when they're busy or clearly engaged in a personal task. Wait for a moment when the person looks more relaxed and possibly open to interaction. Making eye contact or a smile can be your cue. Mastering these elements can dramatically increase the success of your approaches. Making each interaction as smooth and pleasant as possible for both you and the person you're interested in. Part three, the approach. Now that we've discussed setting the stage, let's get into the heart of the matter, making the approach. This is where you turn all your preparation into action. Approaching someone isn't just about walking up and starting a conversation. It's how you do it that counts. Start with eye contact, not a stare, 
but a gentle glance to gauge interest. Smile naturally to convey friendliness and keep your body language open and inviting. These non-verbal cues signal your approachability and intent before words even come into play. When it comes to breaking the ice, simplicity is your ally. A genuine compliment on something specific, like a book they're holding, works wonders. Or perhaps, I couldn't help but overhear you mention topic, and I find it fascinating. May I join you? Keep it honest and relevant to the setting. Once the conversation starts, your focus should shift to listening. This doesn't mean just waiting for your turn to speak. Listen actively, show that you're interested in what she has to say by nodding or commenting on her statements. It makes the conversation more engaging and meaningful for both of you. As you chat, steer the conversation towards topics of mutual interest. This could emerge naturally from your initial conversation starter or as you learn more about her. Finding common ground helps the conversation flow more smoothly and builds a connection. By mastering these techniques, you'll make each approach not just successful, but enjoyable. Remember, the goal isn't just to meet someone, but to make the interaction comfortable and connected. Part four, beyond the first conversation. Now, you've had a great start, but what comes next is crucial. Turning that first conversation into a potential lasting connection. Getting her contact information should feel as natural as the conversation itself. The key is to ensure she's comfortable. You might say, I've really enjoyed talking with you. Would it be okay if we exchanged numbers so we can continue this conversation another time? Always ask permission. It shows respect for her privacy and comfort. Before parting ways, setting the stage for future interaction can be a smooth move. It's about showing genuine interest in seeing her again. You could suggest there's a coffee shop I think you'd really like. How about we check it out together next week? Make it specific and casual, which can make the invitation more appealing. Following up is more than just a courtesy. It's an opportunity to show you were genuinely interested in the conversation. Send a message within a day or two to keep the momentum. It could be something light and related to your conversation. Like, hey, I found the book we talked about and you were right. It's fantastic. What are you reading these days? Remember, the goal is to foster a sense of ongoing connection, not just to check a box. Being thoughtful and timely in your follow-up can make all the difference. Part five, common mistakes to avoid. Even with the best intentions, a few common mistakes can undermine your efforts to connect. Being aware of these can help you navigate social interactions more smoothly. First, it's crucial not to come on too strong. This means maintaining a respectful distance and not overwhelming her with too much attention or too many personal questions too soon. Respecting personal space is not just about physical boundaries. It's also about giving her the space to engage with you at her own pace. Next, let's talk about cliches and pickup lines. Sure, they might seem like a handy shortcut, but they often come off as insincere. Being genuine trumps rehearsed lines every time. Authenticity can't be faked, and people can sense when you're being true to yourself and to them. Start a conversation with something heartfelt or relevant to the moment you're sharing. Finally, pay close attention to social cues. This includes noticing if she's engaged or if she seems uncomfortable. If she's looking away, giving short answers, or stepping back, she might not be interested in continuing the conversation. Respect these signals. Pushing beyond them doesn't just risk discomfort. It can also close the door on any future interactions. Remember, successful social interactions are about mutual respect and enjoyment. By avoiding these common mistakes, you can ensure that your approaches are welcomed and appreciated. As we wrap up today's guide on how to approach women, let's quickly recap what we've covered. We started with the basics of mindset and preparation, emphasizing the importance of confidence and respect. We then moved into understanding the setting, mastering the approach with effective communication techniques, 
and discussed how to maintain the connection beyond the first conversation. And of course, we covered what not to do, helping you avoid common pitfalls. Now, it's your turn to put these strategies into action. Approach with confidence, listen sincerely, and above all, respect the boundaries and comfort of others. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more content like this. Remember, the key to making meaningful connections is respect and genuine interest. With these tools, you're well on your way to forming better relationships. Good luck, and let's make every interaction count. Stay connected with us through our social media channels. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for more updates and exclusive content. And be sure to tune in next time when we'll be exploring effective communication in relationships. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.